just before the end of 2022, Backman released another narrow gauge locomotive to its portfolio. That loco was the mainline Huntsless. I've acquired one for my narrow gauge fleet, but was it worth it? Well, we're about to find out. So sit back and enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and you're joining me for my first review of 2023. So what better way than to kick off the year of reviews than by looking at something in 009 scale. And I'm going to be taking a look at one of Batman's narrow gauge mainline hunt slits. These were announced and released by Batman just before the end of 2022. And when these were announced I had to have one of these for the narrow gauge fleet. The one I've gone for is Charles in the Penwin Quarry Railway line black livery which this is the light livery and this has just arrived and I've also got another 009 loco as well along with this which that shall be covered in a separate video today's video is all about this one so we're gonna get it open and we're gonna get down on the light and we're gonna have a look at it So here we have Penryn Mainline Huntslit Charles out of the box and on the layout. First thing to report, no quality control issues, that's great. Because the last thing we want to see is having to return a model after spending regardless amount of money on said model. Out of the box, the mechanism is absolutely beautifully smooth. It's an absolute stunning performer. Also, this model comes with a flickering firebox which is a first for ready to run narrow gauge locomotives so that's also great to see and I think it's a fantastic feature especially when you can catch a glimpse of that glowing firebox it really does add something to the model it just seems to give it more character and realism so we'll make a start with the detail first of all we have the buffer beam I know it doesn't have any buffers on the loco but it is a buffer beam because this loco in real life does have a centre buffer but Batman's put the coupling where it would be. You also get some nice rivet detail on the buffer beams as well. Then moving to the cylinders you can see we do have some rivet detail especially on the cylinder heads and you can see the cylinder heads themselves they've been painted and you can see this separately fitted bit of detail there which has been painted as well. Plus you've also got the lubricator pipe being there as well again separately fitted and picked out and painted and that does look stunning. On the smoke box door you can see on the hinges you have rivet detail especially on the straps, separately fitted lamp iron, separately fitted handrail and separately fitted smoke box door darts and the front handrail and darts have been painted you know that does look stunning and then on the chimney you can see we do have that brass ring there obviously it's not made of brass on the model it is painted but it still looks nice and it looks convincing enough so that you could possibly mistake it for a part that's been made out of brass or copper even whatever Moving to the frames of the loco, you see we have some rivet detail. You also can see the reversing lever just here, separately fitted and painted. Plus you have the springs as well. And there is also some separately fitted pipework detail there as well. On top of the water tank you have more separately fitted piping detail. You've also got a fire iron holder and a separately fitted handrail. 
You've also got the whistle and the dome there. Now those parts are not made out of brass, but they are painted and they still look nice considering how they've been painted and they've been painted up again so that you could mistake them for being made out of brass parts. You've also got glazing in the cab windows as well. Moving to the cab sides we have some nice rivet detail on those and you've also got a crisply printed builder's plate. The printed detail on that is rather fine. Moving to the detail on the back head, I have to say the interior detail on this, Batman has really gone to town on. you got the gauges there, regulator, lever and so on. It's all there, it's all painted and separately fitted. And even the gauges, when you look at them, they are made out of a clear plastic. So they do actually look a lot more realistic looking, rather than just being just painted. And also just look at the copper detail in there as well that's been picked out and painted. And again, that painted detail looks stunning. And also the interior of the cab, inside of the cab sides, has been painted green, which I think looks fantastic. You also get the coal bunker as well in the loco, as per the prototype. Separate fitting, got some nice rivet detail on it, it's been painted. The bunker itself though, is empty so I shall be fitting some real coal in there because otherwise it's just looked like it's going to be running around with an empty coal bunker in. Moving to the rear of the cab of the loco you can see we do have some nice rivet detail. We also have the glazing in the window portals as well and also you can see the doors on the end of the cab and those doors were used mainly for using the fire irons either when on the move or when stationary. Moving to the livery application now and I think the livery application is gorgeous. Correct shade of black, it's all been evenly painted there's no blemishes or imperfections anywhere at all and then you've got the blue and red lining which I think really sets off this livery nicely. You know it's all there, it's on the cylinders on the loco frames, on the cab sides, tanks, on the rear cabs and so on. And the lining has just been so crisply and neatly applied, it's second to none. And it just looks lovely. And that's the reason why I chose this one, because it was the livery that stood out to me on this. Turning the loco around to the other side, you can see you do have these injector pipes on this side of the loco as per the prototype. Now they do look perhaps a little bit on the thick side you know perhaps they don't necessarily look as fine but then from what I have un understood and heard I believe that they were made a little bit more thicker so that they had the durability. If that's the case then that's understandable but regardless I don't think they really take away from the model I don't think they detract from it. You know I still think that they look lovely and I'd rather that those details be there. And they're all separately fitted and painted as well and the detail when you look at it it's just fantastic. Of course on both sides of the loco you have crisply printed nameplates which I will be fitting the etched ones on this loco. You also get etched builders plates as well so they'll be going on the loco as well but the crisply printed ones do look nice it has to be said that Batman really has captured the look of the mainline horn slit superbly everywhere you look at it they haven't got a single detail missed off or incorrect as far as I'm concerned it most definitely looks like a mainline horn slit I might as well quickly show you the accessory bags. So in this one you have the etch builders and name plates. And the detail on those looks stunning. And then in the other accessory bag you have 
a lamp which fits onto the front of the loco on the lamp iron and you have the coupling that has a bracket. So now that I've covered the loco in detail and had a look at the accessories as well, covered the running performance, I think what we need to do now is to get this loco running around the layout. So I'm going to leave you with a few shots of seeing this loco run around the layout so that you can see it performing on the layout and then I'll come on to my final conclusion for the model. OK, so you've seen Charles running around the layout, hauling the mini trains slate wagons, which they are the skip wagons filled with slate. Real slate, I should add. Though in the future we'll look to buying some of the Batman slate wagons, I think, at some point in the future, perhaps. But I thought that those wagons, you just saw this loco haul, went really well with this loco. So now that you've seen the loco covered in detail and you've seen it running on the layout you've seen what it can do what's my verdict on this model honestly in my opinion I think this is a cracking model definitely worth the money I think it's a step up on Batman's narrow gauge range I mean they have produced some stunning models already such as the double fairly, the quarry Hunslet, and the Baldwins but this model has really gone to town and I think it really has the wow factor in it. The flickering firebox especially, that really is something to behold and admire. So if you're into 009 and you model it, I definitely recommend the mainline Hunslet. They've also brought out Linda as well as a tender loco as an 040 and I suspect that they'll probably produce it along with Blanche as a 240 as well with the tender at some point in the future possibly but definitely recommended by me absolute stunning model I'm glad I bought it and it will make a great addition to the narrow gauge fleet so that's it then for my review of Batman's narrow gauge mainline Huntslet I hope you've enjoyed this review if you like what you see subscribe to the channel smash the like button Feel free to post a comment and after you watch this video why not check out all my other videos I've got on the channel. But until next time, take care. Bye for now. See you next time.